In the linked video, we covered the fundamentals of hardness testing, using the Brunel method as an example. This method, which uses a hard metal ball as the indenter, is particularly well suited for soft to medium hard materials with heterogeneous structures, such as cast iron. For very hard and thin workpieces, the Vickers hardness test method is suitable, which is explained in detail in the linked video. This method uses a four-sided pointed diamond pyramid as the indenter. In both the Brunel and Vickers hardness test methods, hardness is determined by the ratio of the test force to the surface area of the indentation. In both cases, the indentation is evaluated using a microscope, making automated hardness testing impractical with these methods. To address this limitation, the Rockwell hardness test method, described in more detail in the following, was developed. In the Rockwell hardness test, Hardness is determined by measuring the indentation depth rather than the surface area of the indentation. The indenter used is either a cemented carbide ball or a rounded diamond cone with a tip angle of 120 degrees and a tip radius of 0.2 millimeters. The deeper the indenter penetrates the material under a given force, the softer the material. A key advantage of this method is that the indentation depth can be measured directly using the traverse path of the testing machine, eliminating the need for manual evaluation under a microscope. This makes the process highly suitable for automation in mass production. The Rockwell hardness test is performed in three steps. First, the indenter is applied to the test surface with a preload F0 of 10 kilopons, equivalent to 98 newtons. This initial load compensates for potential setting effects in the sample and any clearance in the measuring instrument. Additionally, it eliminates surface irregularities on the material sample, which could otherwise significantly affect the depth measurement. After holding the preload for a brief period, the depth measurement sensor is set to zero. This zero point serves as the reference level for measuring the indentation depth. Next, in addition to the preload, the actual test load F1 is applied. The indenter penetrates the material surface with a total force F, which is the sum of F0 and F1. The appropriate test force F1 is determined from reference tables based on the type of indenter used and the material being tested. After the indenter penetrates the material surface with the applied total force, the test force F1 is removed. The material is then subjected only to the preload F0, causing the indenter to lift slightly due to the elastic deformation of the sample. However, contact with the sample is maintained. The remaining indentation depth H, measured while maintaining the preload F0, is used as the basis for calculating the hardness value. In this example, an indentation depth of 0.112 mm is achieved using the diamond cone. This corresponds to a Rockwell hardness value of 44 HR. The fundamental steps for calculating this hardness value from the measured penetration depth will be explained in more detail in the following. When diamond cones are used as indenters, the hardness value is determined based on a reference depth of 0.2 mm. The hardness value assigned to the material depends on how close the indenter comes to this reference depth. Full penetration of the indenter to the reference depth would indicate that the material is very soft, corresponding to a hardness value of zero. On the other hand, if the diamond cone does not penetrate the material at all, it would indicate an extremely hard material, which would be assigned the maximum hardness value of 100. The scale is evenly divided in increments of 2 micrometers so reaching half of the reference depth corresponds to half of the maximum hardness value. In this case, the material would have a Rockwell hardness value of 50. Therefore, when diamond cones are used, the Rockwell scale is divided into 100 hardness levels. Using the given formula, the Rockwell hardness value HR can be calculated based on the indentation depth H. The depth H must be specified in millimeters. The testing method using a diamond cone is particularly suitable for very hard materials, such as hardened or tempered steels. With the exception of special procedures, the preload is 10 kilopons, equivalent to 98 newtons. Depending on the specific test variant, different test loads are applied. In the so-called test variant scale C, the sample is subjected to a test load of 140 kilopons, which corresponds to 1373 newtons. However, especially when testing thin sheets, there is a risk that such high test forces may cause the material to bulge out on the opposite side, thereby falsifying the measurement result. To address this, the test variant scale A was introduced for diamond cone testing, which uses a reduced test force of 50 kilopons, equivalent to 490 newtons. There is also a less common variant scale D, in which the hardness value is determined using a test force of 90 kilopons, 
equivalent to 883 newtons. For test variants C, D, and A, the hardness value is calculated using the provided formula. When testing relatively soft materials, a diamond cone would penetrate too deeply, resulting in an indentation that exceeds the reference depth of 0.2 mm. For this reason, soft surfaces are tested using cemented carbide balls, and the reference depth is extended to 0.26 mm. The cemented carbide ball has a diameter of 1 16th of an inch, which equals 1.5875 mm. The hardness values are still subdivided in increments of 2 micrometers. Therefore, the use of cemented carbide balls results in hardness values ranging theoretically from 0 up to a maximum of 130. Using the given formula, the Rockwell hardness value HRB can be calculated based on the indentation depth H, with the depth specified in millimeters. In contrast to hardness testing with diamond cones, spherical indenters are better suited for softer metals such as structural steels or brass. When using a carbide ball for hardness testing, a distinction is made between test variants B and F. In both cases, the preload is 10 kilopons, 98 newtons. The procedures differ only in the actual test force. For scale B, the test force is 90 kilopons, 883 newtons, while for scale F, the test force is 50 kilopons, 490 newtons. Due to the reduced test force, scale F is particularly suitable for very soft materials, such as copper. In the less common scale G, the test force is 140 kilopons, equivalent to 1,373 newtons. However, it is important to ensure that the carbide ball does not flatten excessively under the high test load, which could distort the result. The hardness values for test variants F and G are calculated using the same formula as the hardness value for scale B. In special scales, cemented carbide balls with a diameter of 1 8 of an inch can also be used as indenters. The table provides an overview of the common Rockwell scales. The hardness values determined with different scales are generally not comparable. Additionally, the hardness value determined using a specific scale must fall within a certain range. If the value falls outside of this range, the scale must be changed, as the indenter has either penetrated too deeply or not deeply enough into the material. For scale A, this range is between 20 and 95 HRA. For scale C, Hardness values between 20 and 70 HRC are considered acceptable. When testing with carbide balls in scale B, the validity range is between 10 and 100 HRB, and for variant F, it is between 60 and 100 HRF. A minimum sample thickness must also be ensured so that the result is not influenced by the support of the testing machine. For test variants with cone-shaped indenters, the minimum sample thickness corresponds to 10 times the permanent indentation depth. For scales using spherical indenters, the minimum sample thickness corresponds to 15 times the permanent indentation depth. In all cases, the distance of the indentation to the sample edge must be greater than 1 mm. The surface of the specimen must also be ground and must not exceed a mean roughness of 1.6 micrometers. Otherwise, the surface roughness would lead to large measurement uncertainties. The standard compliant indication of Rockwell hardness consists of the hardness value and the corresponding scale. When spherical indenters are used, it is also necessary to specify the material of the ball. Today, cemented carbide balls made of tungsten are almost exclusively used, designated with the letter W for Wolfram. In the past, steel balls were also used, identified with the letter S. The advantage of Rockwell hardness testing lies in its relatively short testing time and excellent automation capability as the measured values are directly derived from the indentation depth without the need for optical measurement under a microscope. This makes the method particularly suitable for automated production. However, a disadvantage of the Rockwell method is its relatively small depth range. Even small impurities in the material can cause significant deviations in the indentation depth, and thus in the hardness value. This issue is especially pronounced when testing very hard materials, where the measuring accuracy is compromised due to the minimal differences in indentation depths. In such cases, the Vickers test method is much more suitable for hard materials. However, it has disadvantages when testing heterogeneous materials such as cast iron. In this case, the Brunel hardness method should be used. The table summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of the different testing methods. The diagram shows reference values for the expected hardness of unalloyed and low-alloy steels in their untreated state.